The first thing you have to do is come up with a key bed, which is the keys. I chose to use a key bed that was made by Yamaha some years ago. It's no longer being made, but it's probably one of the most durable key beds that was ever made for a synthesizer. You could have found it in a Yamaha DX7 or even a Korg M1, and a lot of products use that particular key bed. It's a very, very good action and a very good feel. But most importantly, it's got very good contact system in it that is trouble free. So to use that keyboard with a MIDI project, I have to come up with a MIDI encoder board. This is going to take the key closures of the switches, convert that to MIDI, and send it out. The only MIDI encoder board that I could find that could work with these types of contacts was made by MIDI Boutique. And they call them changeover contacts. So they make a board, the MKCB128SN. This board can work with the changeover contacts that I'm using, or it can work with the make-make contacts of your more typical keybed. It can convert 128 different notes, which is the full note range of MIDI. Most keyboards are not going to have that many notes, and the one I just built is a 49 note or a 4 octave. The one I made a couple of years ago was a 61 note, 5 octave. The MIDI Boutique MIDI encoder can not only encode all your key contacts, but it can also have three control voltages. So, for example, you could have a sustain pedal, or you could have an expression pedal, or some other control volume, and you can program those three analog inputs to be any control you want. I'm choosing two of them and using one for sustain or damper and using the second one for the expression. But I'm going to have a panel on the left that's going to have a lot more controls so in order to do that I have to get an additional board. For the control panel I chose a Dofer Pocket Electronics Universal MIDI control board. It can take up to 16 different either switches, pots, mod wheel, pitch wheel, whatever and convert that to MIDI. You can assign all of those 16 different inputs to be whatever MIDI control you want them to be. Both of these boards come with a software program that you can load into your PC and you can dump into these boards what you want those controls to be, fully programmable. Once you make that dump, that's the way it works from now on. I drew out some panels that were similar to the one that I saw on the Moog. I did know that I wanted a pitch and mod wheel, and then I wanted some auxiliary knobs to do various things. So I decided that one of them would be volume, one of them would be the filter setting, and one of them would be a resonance control for the filter. So the three aux knobs will be used for future expansion. I can program those to be different things like the depth of your effects or what have you. I may want to use this controller with an iPad or with a computer or maybe another keyboard. So these other controls could be useful. So I laid the four octave key bed down on the workbench, took the MIDI and controller board and laid it next to it and then tried to decide how big is the case gonna be. I ultimately decided that I wanted it to match the case of the five octave key bed that I had, which is about 34 inches long. That way I could actually stack one above the other and it, they would look like they went together. So the next step is to turn the key bed over and start wiring up your MIDI encoder board. Basically you just take these uh, ribbon cables and they supply the plugs. They don't supply the ribbon cables but I had lots of those laying around so I dressed them up, put them on these plugs and then ran them over to the key bed and you just wire them up sequentially. The next step was to start building the case. The first case that I made I did some gluing but I also used screws. This time I wanted to try to minimize using screws and try to glue everything together. I kind of got that idea from looking at the Moog keyboard when I was working on it because I didn't see any screws in that except for the very top panel. So the first step was to take the base and figure out what size it was going to be. Then you got the sides, the back, the front, so forth. Cut all those pieces out. Once I got all the wood cut, started forming everything together and gluing everything together. The only thing I was going to do was keep the top where it was removable. And then that way, if I had to remove the key bed or any other electronics, they would just come up through the top. So I had to make sure that the key bed was mounted through the bottom. I mounted two pieces of wood on either end of the key bed because there's a little bit of frame sticking out on both sides. And that's the cheek box on both sides. So I got out my trusty graph paper and I sat down and I drew a panel. Added the pitch wheel, the mod wheel, and then the six controllers. And then also I have a push button and an LED. That's because the pocket electronics board 
there's a couple of modes you can put it in and it supplies you with this extra push switch and the LED and the LED actually tells you uh, what mode it's in and so forth. So I wanted to put that on the panel as well. Also, while I was doing this, I created the another drawing for the back. Because on the back, you're going to have your power input, MIDI in and out, and possibly some pedals and so forth. So I created another drawing for that, sent it over to him. A couple of days later, he brings over these great uh, panels that are cut, labeled, and everything, and they look amazing. So I mounted all the controls on the panels, began to hook up the wires, and then wire them into the existing boards. Did a little programming with the computer to make sure the controls did what I need them to do and basically put it all back together. This whole thing runs on 12 volts DC. Now both these boards have the ability to do MIDI merge. So basically I'm going to put them in series. The key scanning board is going to be the, the last in the series. It's going to directly go to the MIDI output on the back. The pocket electronics board its MIDI out is going to go to the MIDI end of the key scanning board. 